you know, folks, I haven't really done a car video yet, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you my daily driver. This is a 1990 BMW 735i, the old E32 model. Uh, it's got all the standard features, dual, or dual zone climate control, cruise control, the works. Pretty cheap and affordable car these days. I mean, everybody thinks of BMWs as being ridiculously expensive and the kind of thing that would send you down the drain, but this one here has been real good to me. And yes, that is a pool of coolant on the floor down there, and I'll get to that in a minute. I picked this one up for about 10 grand about four years ago. I mean, by today's standards, they're worth about six in good condition. All leather interior, onboard computer, climate control. I put the CD in myself. The old 10 disc CD changer was busted, along with the old analog car phone that these came with. Even be, even if it did work, the old analog phones are pretty much useless now. Basically, what I'm up to today is I'm going to do a full fluid change and oil filter. And that is a brand new radiator, 500 bucks worth. It's a bit pricey considering these can be rebuilt, but I figured by the time I take it to a radiator shop and get them to do it all, the price is up near the cost of a new radiator anyway, so I can do it myself. Uh, Maintenance-wise, these cars aren't too expensive to run if you know where to go to get your parts. If you go straight to the dealer for something like a radiator, it's going to end up costing you $800 or more. But if you go to a aftermarket supplier that can source OEM built parts, you save a lot of money. Basically, this is only costing me as much as any large six-cylinder sedan to own and run. Insurance is a little bit higher than normal, but no higher than any brand new car that you can get for 20 or 30 grand. But you can't beat the style of these old things. I know the new BMWs are great, but they're so over sophisticated and well the styling hasn't quite grown on me yet this is the M30 straight six it's, it's basically the same old M30 that was developed in the 1960s except this one's had obviously numerous minor changes plus retrofitting of the Bosch fuel injection obviously they've added emission control as well that's currently giving me a bit of grief. I think the O2 sensor on the cat's on its way out. She likes to hunt a bit when cold. This little idle control governor is also attributing to that hunting and poor idle. So that will be one of the next future projects. Another thing that sometimes bugs people about these cars is their electronics. Uh, I've had a couple of little electrical gremlins in this one, but basically it's nothing you can't troubleshoot with a multimeter and a circuit diagram. I've got actually bought the shop manual for this one when I picked the car up uh, for $200 and so far it saved me way more than that in service fees. Something as simple as this check control module which basically maintains and detects faults in any of the components of the car from tail light failures through to transmission and engine problems. I had a problem where I was hitting a bump on the way to work and it would flash up on the LED display in there. It would tell me the self-leveling suspension was going inactive. Now this car doesn't actually have self-leveling suspension. So I figured something was up and I popped this little module open and found some of the pin solder joints on the printed circuit board had gone bad. I resoldered them and all the errors went away. It wasn't the only error I had, but they just pop up whenever I hit a bump, so I figured it was a bad connection. Voila resold your check control module, it could save you a couple of hundred bucks. She's running a bit rough at the moment because of the bad O2 sensor and worn exhaust system. I think there's actually a couple of holes in it now, so that's just one of the next things on the list to do. But I'll give her a shot anyway. As you can see, I haven't reset the service indicator whenever I do a service on it, so it tells me it's due. But only just at the moment. They really do have a nice note to them with a good exhaust on them. 
this one stuff, but she still has a bit of a grunt. Very loud injectors, you can hear a very audible ticking sound from them. The solid state coil down in there, all the ignition laser under the plastic cover. That's a uh, second electronic control box. There's about six such control boxes throughout this car, in the mid-body and in the trunk. She's actually running quite well because she's warm, but if she was stone cold she'd be running like a dog. But I'll be addressing that problem next. Other little features, obviously power windows, real wood grain trim, not the plastic crap. The check control button if there is any faults in the system. I know I've got a brake light out in the centre there, so press the brake pedal and that will come up. That's another thing I've got to do today is replace that light that went out a couple of days ago. You have your two temperature sensors here. One's going back to the ECU and one goes to the temperature gauge on the dash panel. Uh, that's a thermostat in there. I replaced that about 12 months ago. It went wide. The actual thermostat body snapped and it just stayed wide open and ran the engine cold. So Luckily there's no overheating problems because it's stuck shut or anything. And unfortunately that little incident led to the old thermostat housing cracking around here while I was retensioning it. And it actually set me back a day on that, that little job. Distributed in under here. Comes off the end of the motor. Or the end of the cylinder head anyway. This also has auto levelling headlights. If you've got a heavy load in the back of the car and it's for causing the front end to lift up, your lights will shine higher. The auto levelling or manual control on it allows you to dip the headlights a bit lower to compensate for that rise in the front end. Kind of a handy little feature. The Bosch fuel injectors are all hidden under this cover so I can't really show you. One problem I had with it a while back was that this fuel hose was leaking. I've replaced that with the proper fuel injection hose. Likewise up in here they can leak a bit. That supplies to the common injection rail. It's the alternator down there. I'm not sure what it's rated at. It's actually got a cooling duct coming from the front going straight into it. I know these cars use a lot of amps. They actually have their own separate negative ground wiring loom rather than just relying on the body for ground. That's why you'd notice a lot of these plugs all have two pins instead of just one. Everything's grounded separately. This here is your service port for the computer. You can actually get a tool that plugs into your PC via the COM port, and possibly even USB now. And you can read faults off the main computer and interpret them on the PC so that you know just what's going on. Particularly for things like fuel injection adjustments and faults that you can't obviously see or hear. Bosch anti-lock brake cylinder down there. The brake cylinder is actually on this side of the car because these are sort of, they're built at the factory as a right hand drive but initially they're designed for left hand drive. So there's actually linkage that goes across the underside of the dash panel to operate the brake. 